I once did a cabbage juice enema to heal my hemorrhoids. So naturally, people come to me for health advice, and I'm going to help 10 people right now, if you don't mind. So let's say you're kicked out into the street, all grocery stores and restaurants disappear, public transportation delivery service disappear, 90% of the world's population disappears. How do you eat? I'm leaning breatharian with a urine looping system that I am self-sustained by starlight and wind, basically, and the odd dip in a creek. But honestly, people envision these doomsday scenarios. In my opinion, you're saying this because you think there wouldn't be enough plants to sustain us, and therefore, I just go grab a deer, because that's an easy thing. Here, you sorry. I'm. Honestly, it depends where you live. If I'm in the tropics, I'm just wandering until I find fruit trees. I went for long walks in Penang, Malaysia, and I was seeing giant mango trees. They were a little too tall. It was like 30 feet up in the air, the closest mango. I was like, how would I do that? But you get a pole. Honestly, our modern day people have lost the skill to feed ourselves. We don't know what the hell we're doing. Like our ancestors might have been able to do that. It's like, yeah, you go down here for the peach tree, you moron. Not now, in August. We suck. So like, I, I would die. I'd be the first dead. And then people would feed off me. And then there, I contributed to society, haven't I? Yes. But the reality is fruit only grows for so long. Winter comes, animals are super hard to catch. Like, what would we do? Like, you think you, oh, I'll, I would just hunt. Where? How? Like, you need skills to track. I go for long nature walks. I rarely see anything. I went the other day, and I was like, I didn't see a damn thing. A couple robins. Like, there's no deer anywhere. And even if I saw one, it would be gone. They see me before I see them. The B12 subs are hilarious. Anytime a vegan tries to tell you humans are frugivores, Bring up a B12 and watch them squirm. Okay, calm down with your pleasure for people being hurt with B12 deficiencies. I know it's fun for you to see people suffer. B12 is like in everything. It's in the air. It's in the soil. Where do you think a cow gets B12? Eating the soil, the grass and the soil, it licks it up, boom. If you want to break it down, B12, cobalt, a mineral broken down by methyl bacteria of some sort, forming methylcobalamin. Boom. So you just need a mineral and a bacteria to break it down and attach something to it. It makes a little treasure chest and then you eat it. That's in our stuff. Like we shouldn't have to do it. I only take it for the backup plan. Like maybe I'm not getting it. We produce it in our gut as well. Like. I've seen people go on water fasts, they were B12 deficient, it naturally raises, eating nothing. So boom. If a cow is not grass fed, it has to be supplemented B12, and that's why it has it. So if it's just eating corn feed and hay, ah, a little cobalt in that little mix. So it's not like, a, I just take it as a backup just in case I'm not making it myself. I probably am during a dry fast and in the urine. It's weird though, people will say that about vegans, oh, you need B12, and then they're perfectly fine being on a carnivore diet where you need vitamin C and other electrolytes and salt every day or you'll get muscle cramps. And it's like, I take B12 like once a week, just in case I might need it. Whereas like, good luck on a day without salt on a carny diet and everybody on the carny plan is craving that carbonated water. Why do you think that is? Because you lack carbon hydrates. And you need it. You need it. Ask any of them. It's a craving that you cannot ignore after a while. Ice cold carbonated water is needed on a carnivore diet. Admit it. You're carnivore, right? You're not? Oh boy. David Klein, the man who saved my life. He wrote that book, Healing Colitis and Crohn's. Without him, I'm dead. That was the last attempt at healing myself, and it finally worked. Got off all meds. God bless this man. I saw on Facebook it was his birthday the other day, and I'm like, 
That's weird. He's dead. Okay. No problem there. And I just, I went to his profile just to see if anybody was leaving happy birthday messages. And there was. Happy birthday. Happy birthday from Nepal. Have a wonderful day. He won't. He won't. He's dead. He's beyond us. He might be having a nice day. He's probably having a better day than we are. Floating around out there in heaven with the stars. Vortexed out of his dome with fruit. You had one fruit smoothie and then boom. He's dead, you assholes. Do some research. Happy birthday, buddy. Miss you. We'll catch up sometime. You won't. He's gone forever. Can you give an update on drinking distilled water? Have you noticed any side effects, good, bad, or indifferent? It's all good. It's just been nothing noticeable. It's just how our body works. We don't need these minerals. You get minerals from fruits and vegetables, meat, scum, you scumbag. And those are organic minerals that our body can use. In water, it's not that we can't use them, it's just a burden to do so. The minerals in water is rocks, and it's like, not only can we not use all of them, you have to donate carbon, a lot of them just end up accumulating, and it's a burden, you have to release them. So it's like, why bother? Drinking distilled could do nothing but benefit you by unburdening that burden on you. The farmers who sell their produce have to kill every animal, bird, and insect that comes near their crops. That sounds not true at all. That's okay. Those farmers don't care about what's best for animals. They're bothered about the money they earn from growing those crops. Therefore, vegans kill more animals than any cattle farmers do. And then he rambled on. Do you feel alone on your little meat island? where you're murdering things unnecessarily and it hurts you and you want to include others in your crimes. You remind me of like a grade school kid, like a bunch of kids, say there's three kids and they did something mischievous. They planted a fart cushion on their teacher's thing and she sat and she farted and oh, that wasn't me. Oh man. And then they're like, who did that? And it was like, it was you. I can see it. Timmy, you did it. And then Timmy's like, no, Johnny did it too. He, he made me do it. He's doing it. That's what you're doing. You did a bad thing. You've killed an animal for no reason. Then you're like, vegans, animals die. They're doing it. You're, you're knowing that it's wrong. So you're like, they're also wrong. They're as wrong as me. Two wrongs don't make a right. It really is a silly argument. I'm sure there's bad farmers sitting on their porch with a shotgun and saying, there's a pig, ah, you're dead. It's like, build a fence, you freak. But like, it's, vegans don't kill things. Bad farmers probably do, but it's not a necessity. To grow a peach tree, nothing has to die. Even growing like a field of wheat, we could devise a way that nothing died. Tractors make a lot of noise. You could beam frequencies and like bright lights. Things would run. Boom, peace for everyone. Get out of the field, run. It's peaceful. Picture this scenario when anyone ever tells you something like this. Oh, crop deaths, vegans are killing so much. Picture a dirty man in his apartment. He's got a cracker addiction, crumbs everywhere, and his apartment gets infested with cockroaches. Because he's a slob, he has now attracted all these little critters, and then he's going to go and kill a bunch of them. So he's a murderer. And so you could say, eating crackers kills cockroaches. Oh my god. Well, I also love crackers. Don't eat them very often, but if I did, I'd seal the bag when I'm done. I haven't seen a cockroach here once. Not one cockroach. I've been here like four years, maybe. I don't kill cockroaches with my crackers. Whereas if you're dumb, you might. So like dumb farmers kill animals. That's not our fault. Insulin is not bad, but insulin resistance is, and it is caused by keeping your insulin levels high for long periods of time. No, it's not. Your insulin is high for long periods of time because you have insulin resistance. You didn't cause anything here. You just circular logic your way into a ditch. 
Why do you think you have insulin resistance? It's because you're eating too much fat and protein. Then the sugar can't get in the cell. I eat super high sugar, like it goes up and then down immediately. It's not prolonged insulin levels. I've debunked you. On the subject of fructose, according to the researchers in the, oh God, Perelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania, when large quantities of just, you know this study was just rats in a cage fed corn syrup with like rat feed because you can't just survive off corn syrup. So it's high fat diet with corn syrup. Oh my God, the rat liver has gained fatty acids. Oh my God. If humans eat apples, the same thing happens, I bet. Write it down. Why aren't you writing it down? When large quantities of fructose reach the liver, the liver uses excess fructose to create fat, a process called lipogenesis. Oh, well, this happens every time, huh? Every time I eat a little banana, just turns it directly into fat, puts it on my hip. Eventually, people who consume too much fructose develop non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Show me one fruitarian, buddy. Where are they? I wanna see them. There's not one study, there's not one person who has ever developed fatty liver. Show me one person, one example of someone who developed fatty liver or got super fat on a fruitarian type diet that's low in fat as well. Because if you eat high fat, a bunch of avocados, then your next mango meal, you could be insulin resisting your way through fatty liver prison. In actual reality, you eat a giant fruit meal the body uses it as fuel. You have so much storage space. As long as you're active, you have muscles to fill up with glycogen. You have a liver to fill up with glycogen. Your brain is constantly using glycogen. Your blood's always got sugar in it. It takes so much fructose to be like too much for the body to where it would be like, you know what? We should store some of this as fat. And even then, it's not a bad thing, you store some fat for later. People act like it's this liver damaging thing to have any fat stored, but it's so hard. Like even after you've used all the fuel, your body starts to create body heat. It doesn't want to turn sugar into fat ever. So it will then create heat out of nothing just to burn it off. You ever notice you eat a high carb meal, you're like warm? Oh, it's hot in here all of a sudden because you're hot, because you don't want to make fat, because it's hard. I'm telling you, fruits and vegetables are healthy. They always have been. And like all our world is trying to get you afraid of them. And so it's stuff like this, creating high fructose corn syrup out of genetically modified corn and then injecting it into a rat. It's like, see, apples are bad. When you look to nature and then you show a bunch of unnatural hybridized fruits, laugh out loud. Come on, man. Oh my God. Fruits are God's gift to you. It's a temptress to spread their seed. They want you to eat it. They tempt you with sweetness. It was always fruit sweet for eons of time since the beginning. Why would anybody eat it? It's here for us to enjoy, for humans and animals. It's always been sweet. The fact that we hybridize things, that's a good thing. Why would you, say you ate eight apples, you taste them, oh, that's good. And then you get one, it's like, wow, that one's good. You save those seeds, plant those, boom. You have a higher potential tree. And then you're eating from those apples, like, wow, this one, it's even better than the first one that made this tree. And then you plant those and it's like, we evolve the message. So it's like, it's a good thing. Hybridization happens all around us that you're basically saying, never have a black man have sex with an Asian woman cause he'll make a hybrid baby that could take over our world. Is that a world you want to live in? Huh? Some of you hybridized fruit Nazis over here. I think you believe that we had nothing but crab apples for like eons, like there are wild fruits that suck. There's some like bananas that are mostly seeds, sour apples, like these things exist for a reason, medicinal maybe. I don't know why they're here, but we also have better tasting things naturally. There's old ass mango trees, like thousands of years old, I bet, proven by Scientology. And they're sweet 
If you look at nature, all the foods that would appeal to us, yeah, sure. Most of the fruits you have today have been domesticated before they were basically inedible. See, this guy is believing the story that the former guy said because you read it in a book somewhere. Some guy said this once and now everybody's spreading it without even thinking common sense. Why would that happen? Why would fruit be here then? Who's gonna take it? Oh, this, oh, gross. I'll never eat that again. Good luck spreading those seeds. Like, why would it happen? Fruit's always been sweet. You think we just made it. Oh, this sour ass peach, inedible. I wish we could make it sweet somehow. You think they injected corn syrup? We need it for the rat studies. This is how myths spread. Somebody comes up with a theory and then dumb people read it and then they go tell their dumber friends. And then that's why we're in this mess where it's like low carb, do the Ducan diet, nothing but cabbage. It's like, what are we doing? Fruit and veggies, bitch. You stopped ending your videos with the arm head bow thing because you discovered it was Masonic, but lately you've been doing it again. Does that mean you joined the Masons? I took my power back. I used to do that. It was a respect to you. So I thank you, my friends. Subscribe more. I'll see you in the next one. It was like a bow of respect. Thank you. I'm here because of you, my loyal subscribers. And I learn from you. A lot of great ideas come from not these fruit hybridized freaks. These, I got to weed through the weeds over here, but like so much glory and so much love coming back. It's like, thank you so much. Without me, I'm nothing. I mean, without you, oh boy, that was egotistical. So like I used to bow and then I was looking up, I saw some video with all these Masonic symbols and they're like, oh, A-OK, -okay. oh, six, 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 oh my God. And it's like people covering their eye and doing all kinds of stuff. And like this, I think this was one of them. It was like one of these Masonic symbols. And I was like, I've been doing that the whole time. But usually these people, they take well-meaning symbols like the swastika it's like known to be the greatest thing it's the movement when you're running you make it you make a swastika it's a human thing and it means peace and love and so like people take these symbols and then flip it backwards and it's like haha -ha, it's evil now like the peace symbol it's supposed to be the other way and they flipped it upside down to mean hell it's the tree of life and then it's like, nope, Satan's tree, bitch. So it's like, I'm taking my symbol back. It meant something good one day and I'm making it good again. What it symbolizes to me is my respect and thanks to you. Thank you, my friend. All right, last question. Hey, Casey, do you think high carb is better for weight loss than low carb? I think it's healthier long term. If you're talking like just weight loss, and only the only thing you care about is body composition, you can do both. I mean, low carb is great for weight loss. Tons of people do it. I get you. If you're stuck in that realm, God bless you. It's just, I don't think it's healthy. There's so much more variety you can eat with high carb where high fat, like most people don't digest nuts and seeds very well. So you have like avocado, coconuts, meat. And then there's like too much protein in the meat. So where are you getting fat? It's like you look to kidney fat, you're eating butter. I don't know, man, just clogging up the arteries proven. I was struggling to find enough fat sources when I was doing keto. And it's like fat is so gross on its own. People think it's flavorful. It only adds flavor to other foods. If I have like rice and veggies, it would be more tasty with avocado in there but avocado on its own is pretty bland. It's okay. It's like the least delicious fruit on earth and animal fat is just so bland and gross. It's disgusting. So especially like raw fat, just eating it, try it sometime go get some beef suet and just take it by the spoonful. Tell me how many you can chug. And it's just like the greasy, like it's tolerable. It's not like it's bad. It's just so much fat and it's, all chefs around the world are just looking at me right now thinking, what the hell are you doing? I know that Stephanie Keto person takes like six tablespoons of beef tallow before a workout. Like, what are you doing? 
That's so gross. How can you even live through that workout? I work out fasted. Why do you need the tallow? What's wrong with people? So high carb, you get such a variety. Like, okay, I need sugar. You can get it from fruits. Just within fruits, there's so many different flavors. Then there's starches, rices, beans, grains, potatoes, sweet potatoes. Oh my God. There's so many different types of potatoes. And then non-potato things, taro roots and rutabagas and the vegetable family and salty things. And, and you can eat more. It's like a bigger volume and it's like you're not killing animals. And like the people in here seem to think, you cockroach freak cracker family. I prefer that you don't focus on weight loss and you just, I want to get healthy. And if you're doing that, then you're eating lots of fruit, you're fasting the weight's gonna come off. It's like almost impossible not to. And it's healthy long-term and you kill nothing, you feel light in the spirit. What could go wrong there? Nothing, that's, that's worth a thumb up. I've helped so many people. Wow, look at all the thumbs up. You're thumbing this video down today because you're raising a hybridized kitten-rat mix. They're not genetically compatible. Even if they were, you would have all the features of an angry cat that doesn't love you and a sneaky rat that goes in between the walls of your house. I don't like those odds. The combination of that animal knocking things over the shelves within your walls just to laugh at you it's not a being of love still i wouldn't kill it because i'm vegan so go ahead make your written it's a rat kitten or a cat but kitten rat it's already a cat i guess cats are rats i'll leave Thank you for watching and subscribing for more videos and I'll see you in the next one.